In this video, I'm going to show how to add um, a new course for my open math and how to adjust some settings if you want to. So this is mine. It's a lot of courses there. Um, scroll down to the bottom of your um, homepage there. Right under your courses, you can add a new course. Then you can start with a blank course and you can just, you know, put in a name. Um, and just say, you know, math, whatever. And then you can put a key in. I actually just put my last name in there. Um, you can use the new version is what I've been using. Availability and access, you can require enrollment from everyone. No key required for group members, no key. I'm gonna just um, require enrollment because this is a fake thing. You can integrate it into your LMS. We use Canvas. Um, I'm not sure how it works with other things. And additional options. I usually give some late passes. Um, I also give, um, you know, a grace period of three days. So I would, you know, change this here to 72 hours. I might give them, say, you know, 20 to use, or if I want to give a bunch, just because uh, I they get a grace period no matter what. It's just really their submission window, but it's college, so it's a little different than high school. Uh, I like to have everything messaged to me through the system. So I put on for send and re receive, but I would enable um, monitoring of student. I don't generally use the form list or, and such in there, but um, because I use it in Canvas, but if you're using this straight along, this is a good learning management system on its own too. Um, you might want to click send to have students sign up. If you do integrate it in, you can allow the learning management system to assign the dates. That gets a little more complicated though. So here's um, the way you would integrate it in, but we're not going to get into that. I'll just do enter course and you can, once you have a blank course that you want, you can start copying from another course. So that might be the way to, to go for you um, and I can build some things in the course that bare bones course and you can pull them over and you can click um, copy you would actually have to find me in others courses under South Puget Sound Community College and then find my name and then find the course but I'll give you the ID for this, for the bare bones one, I did I did give you um, the streamlined version and the full version as well. So I'll give you those numbers in an email. But this one is nine four seven three seven. And I don't have very much in there yet, but look up the course. So here it is. It just pops up for you, so it's easy to see. And you can preview it if you want, but you can just select course items. Now, here's where you want to be careful. You may or may not want to copy the whole course, <clears throat> especially if you're just taking bits by bit. So I would do select items to copy. And then for now, just check them all because we are pulling in everything for the first time. And if you want to copy my settings, like with those late passes and stuff like that, you can do that as well, but you don't have to, you can set your own. And then here's what it looks like. Um, and this one, I just have like the Desmos link. Um, I have intro to my open math. So this would be good for you to go to also. But what's nice about this is you can do a teacher preview and you can mess with stuff without really messing up what you've saved. And you can put instructions in there um, as well for students and you can even edit things. But uh, what's nice about this is it, which I like, I have it, these set to go to my email, but you might want to just look at them inside the system, but they can message instructor question. 
So if they're not sure about anything, they can ask you and then you get a pop up of this very specific question, which is really nice. And then you can reply right back there. You don't have to clog up your email. I have them sent to my work email, but um, you may want to avoid that. You just have to go to your notifications and set that. So it tells you all how to enter stuff, which is really nice. Um, if they want to check, you know, what the answer is, they could do that. I usually set things so that they, um, if they jump to answer, that'll use up their tries at that version. They get a couple of tries to put numbers in on each version is how I have the settings done. Um, <clears throat> But um, once you do that, you're done with that term, but you can, I have it set that they can keep going till they get a hundred, basically. So they can get, a, you know, a similar question and just keep going. Um, they, I also set this so they can add work and just upload an attachment if they want. You can undo that if you want, but I thought um, that's just helpful if you want to see what's going on. So that's just how to enter answers. It's pretty intuitive. Um, there's some things that get a little tricky, like entering these kinds of things. That's why I really think this tutorial is great to do. And so when you click in the box, you get this nice palette um, and they can even show you more. So if you're entering in um, you got to be careful with like using parentheses for instance so if I just do this see what happens it doesn't look like that so they'll start learning so you want to you know put it in a fraction even that I, isn't going to work so I want to hit the fraction first or I can use parentheses but it's, it's pretty good. They've really done a lot with this. It's all done by grants. Um, and there's been, it's majorly used. Like a lot of us are moving to that for free materials. So, and then you can even check the answer, which will be looking in that format. Um, I can jump to answer. Again, for all of these, like, so they're like, I just don't know what to do. Uh, and you can look at the answers too, which is really nice. <laughs> so even if they miss a problem, they get a new type of problem, or, or it's a similar problem, but it's the same type, I should say. You can look and see um, what the answer is for their specific version. You have to do it in the preview version though. Don't do it on their version when they send a question or else you'll mess them up. So you don't want to save any of that. So that's really important to do. Um, one thing I noticed with some of these is if you didn't have like squared off brackets on your keyboard, there might be a problem. I think I add in some notes some places. I can show you how to do that. Here's the monomial practice that they that your students just were working on. Um, and here's what it looks like. It's going to set up like a tutorial. And I added some notes like for here for instance use parentheses for your exponent. So when they type this in they're going to have to add parentheses and they can do it here or just on their keyboard. Um, they usually give you everything you need and then it'll just close the parentheses for them. Okay. And they can check syntax and things like that too. I'm going to show you quick how to do the settings. So over here, there's a little thing to sh change questions. 
or add questions in. Um, you can code your own questions if you know how to do that. I usually just edit. But like, for instance, if you want to change something, just go in here and say edit personal copy. And then that's where I added that little note down here in the question text. I usually never mess with this too much. I'm just still learning that. And then you can save and preview. Um, you can change the point values right in there under questions. Down here you can add in different kinds of things. That's a little bit more complicated. Um, it might be easier for you to just get rid of questions for now. Like if you didn't like a certain one, you could click there and remove it. But in another video, I can show you more about the settings. And then assessment settings, which you can get to right from here, or you can go back over here if you just needed to do settings. You can write some instructions in there. I, it's This is exactly the same as what's up here. And <clears throat> it's just that one's a summary and one's instructions and it just depends how it shows. So I labeled this monomial practice. Um, but you could put in your specific chapters and things. I always do um, show by dates. You can hide them until hide things until you're ready. Or you can just say available to the end date or you can have a start date um, available until it means the due, you know due date so um, you would set it to have a due date or you could just have it open which I have it just open but make sure over here you can actually change your default to like the time you want it due so you don't have to change that every time again there that would probably be better in a different video but if say you liked the settings for um, something that you already did and you don't want to reset all of these things that I'm about to show you you can copy them over by doing that when you copy over you want to make sure that um, you copy the instructions and summary if you want those as well, but you don't need to. You can just copy the settings here. So I want it one question at a time. You can do all at once or in pages. That's totally good. Uh, homework style for homework is nice, but if it's a quiz, it'll come up. They have to do the whole thing to do their retakes. This is just their algorithmically generated, so they get a bunch you can give a penalty if you want to like take one percent off every time they try or something um, I don't do that for homework I do that generally for quizzes on retake they may or may not have a deduction for like 20% or something um, number of tries on each version of a question I set it to two because I don't want them to be going over and over I don't give them any penalty per try and then they can actually just get a new version based on up here um, if they on their you know second time putting it in they're still not right they can get a new version um, but I encourage them to message me and get some help before they're doing that over and over um, so during assessment show scores I for homework I have them see everything they can even see the answer after the last try or jump to answer button but there's different choices like for tests I don't let them see them um, students can view their work immediately um, sometimes you might want to let them see the correct answers in the grade book after that means like they'll always be there but I usually let them see them immediately Um, you can give them different versions so I usually start with the same version but like for a test you might want them to all have something scrambled but then it makes it harder to look at their um, work and match it up so I like it to be pretty consistent but if you're worried about like cheating then you can scramble it up um, you can have them 
show work either during, after, or both. I think I have either right now, but that might be a little bit too busy looking. Allow use of late passes. They can have up to one or unlimited or whatever you choose. And you can allow that after the due date. You can even restrict date, but I just have my late passes be three days. So that's how they get their three day window. Sometimes I leave homeworks open longer than other things. Um, show hints and videos. You want to take those off for quizzes and tests, but for homework, I leave them in there. Um, you can even write little notes in here um, and groups. So I'm going to save those changes. And I want to show you in here where there's videos. So if you notice in the teacher preview, again, um, they can get help on how to do this. So they can have it right there handy, say they just forgot something. And this is James Souza, he's a community college the professor in first expression is um, x to the third times x to the fifth. Arizona. I think it's a college now, Arizona College or something, but um, he's great. He does a lot of the videos for this. I mean, I kind of came upon him and actually know um, the guy he works with is from Washington State. The, the man who started this whole <laughs> program is right at Pierce College, David Lipman. He's written lots of textbooks. And now they're like nationwide, worldwide. So it's been pretty amazing and it's all been done on grants and things like that. So he's excellent. He's top notch, way better than Khan Academy. Um, so, and they have it right there. So if they forget, they can do it. So you want to take those out for quizzes, of course. Um, I don't know if there's anything else at the end. They do need to make sure, you know, they're submitting questions along the way and they can go back into it. Um, sometimes there's worked examples that just might be in the form of a video. You can actually add in your own PDF things. But that, I mean, I, I would say that comes down the road. This is where if you wanted to add work just in general, have them do it at the end of the assignment rather than problem by problem, then, you know, they can do that by that button. Um, once they're done, they can go back in and review things and not mess with their score. They can do that as much as they want. They'll be in review mode. It is important that they don't click that review mode unless um, they are actually done. And if they're late and you allow lates, then they should use a late pass to get in. Sometimes they go into review mode by accident and then they can't reset it. Once they've done that, they um, have to ask you to reset it. So that's kind of important to know. Uh, sometimes I put little notes down there. Like remember about review mode and um, once you do that, you're basically saying, you know, you're not going to use a late pass. You're going to take the score you have and you can mess around because in review mode, they can just kind of see the, all the answers. So for quizzes, that's important. If you do reset it, I give them new versions of everything. Um, I guess that would be it. Here's the grade book. Nobody's in there yet, but it shows you everything. Um, oh, what's kind of nice is you can go into here if you go to isolate, go to this one, and you could um, see, you know, data about it. Um, you can also see there, I'd have to show you one that's done, but um, or put someone in here to see, but you can see a grade list, which is nice, and you can click on their score, and then that pulls up their completed work. I, I would do that in a different video once we're at that place, um, if you do want to use this at all. And then... Um, 
You can do mass changes. Um, you can see who's in your class by the roster. There's all sorts of fancy stuff you can do and you can make it all different colors and really pretty, but um, <laughs> just doing the basics for now. So let me know if you have any questions. Um, I can add in the polynomial work and then whatever next thing, just let me know the topics and I can pop it, pop them in to that bare bones course and you could copy it over from there if you want, or you can just kind of pull things out of the main course, but I figured it the less busy it is for you, um, more streamlined to figure it out, the better. All right. So let me know if you need anything. Have a great day.